Hey, this is Frank Nieto with Vision Quest Auto, and today I am going to review this car, which is the Lincoln Course Air plug-in hybrid. For the right buyer, a plug-in hybrid makes a lot of sense. Just like, similarly, a Lincoln makes a lot of sense if you're shopping in the luxury automobile class. The theme of this review is really going to be about give and take. There's definite gives, there's definite takes that you have to make with this. The first thing I'm going to delve into is just talking about Lincoln, because I think a lot of luxury shoppers tend to overlook Lincoln. The thing that's really interesting about Lincoln is, isn't just that, oh, it does luxury the Ford way. You know, that, 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 that's, that's interesting in and of itself. But the really interesting thing that Lincoln does is Lincoln is focused on luxury from a value point of view. And that doesn't mean cheap at all. That doesn't mean that you're doing a whole lot of, you know, cuts and corners and all that kind of stuff. What it means is you're getting this at a cheaper rate. What makes Lincoln different besides just oh, a value proposition is that Lincoln focuses on comfort more than performance, which is acceleration, handling, you know, connected rides, all that. Um, but when you're looking at it for a comfort vehicle, Lincoln is going to, to lean that way a little bit more than most OEMs. That means that when you're driving along the roads, you shouldn't hear bumps in the roads. You shouldn't, or fuel bumps in the roads. One of the aspects that cuts into it though, is that the plug-in hybrid model itself kind of takes away in part from some of the traditional um, benefits that you'll have with a uh, with a Lincoln, you know, you're going to get it's going to be a little bit louder, um, and we'll discuss that in a, in a minute. But that's one of those things that happens. There's a little bit more compromise with this. So, as I said, um, there are some trade offs, and I'm going to discuss those first. Number one between the Corsair regular Corsair and the Corsair plug-in hybrid. Number one is price. So the Corsair comes in as a value proposition and it, 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 it matches, you know, it's a low end of the pricing scale at its entry point. You know, we're talking around 40 some thousand dollars um, for the entry point. The highest trim and it starts in the fifties, <laughs> about 55, we'll I want to say, um, 55,000. When you add in all of the the feature, you know, if you add in the features on this particular model, you're talking it's it's in it's in you know it's in, it's above sixty thousand dollars. Now you can get because this is a plug-in hybrid, you can get tax credit, thirty-seven fifty tax credit, um, at the point of purchase, which is great, but bear in mind that that's still putting you around sixty thousand at that price point. You do have competitors like the Porsche Macan, which is an entry level. So you're comparing this upper trim, you know, with basically all the bells and whistles to the entry point Porsche Macan. But I want to make that clear that you can, that that's where the price points go at, just to give you a, a sense of things. That's something to consider whether you'd want to get that Corsair or the Corsair plug-in hybrid. Realize the cost goes up significantly. You know, it's, it's cabin is very well appointed. It's, it's, got all kinds of leather. It's got all kinds of, you know, it, it just looks really nice. It's got metal on here. You know, we can, we can turn this around. Um, you know, so again, you know, you see that it's got these, these leather interior all over, not just leather seats, but also leather trim along the dashboard, along the, the seats. Um, it's got, you know, a lot of metal or metal looking <laughs> plastic. Uh, it's got two digital displays. The car is not on right now, but it's got a, a big, screen i will actually turn this on just to give you a sense of that so here we go this is the startup there we go there's a corsair it's a pretty nice screen you know um one thing that's kind of neat is this so you see it says okay this is cool where it changes you say okay and then you know underneath there are digital displays themselves inside the steering wheel so the steering wheel is very functional you've got your sound you've got every kind of control just about built into this um, you know, you've got this, this digital display, uh, right there, um, you know, with all your, your information, you can see your blue cruise 
information. You'll be able to see if there's a car in front of you or not. Um, one of the things that usually I would mind this, um, you know, the when you look at the shifter, the shifter is push buttons. I'm not usually a big fan, but you know what? This fits in with this type of car. You know, this car isn't looking... To, to be a performance beast. Um, you know, you don't really need this shifting. You mentioned a little bit of the cons here, but my pros are, I think that this has a really smooth ride. It's it's very comfortable. You don't feel bumps in the road. Um, you know, I mean, it'd have to be pretty major. You never, you always feel some kind of bump in the road, but you you really, it glides over most of the, the road surfaces. Um, the seats are incredibly comfortable. They're 24 way, what uh, Lincoln calls perfect position and i have to say that it's it's hard to argue with that it's got good power it gets you know pretty pretty good mileage i've been getting on this trip you know roughly 30 miles per gallon um this has about 28 miles of all electric range which is pretty good this is my fat guy in little coat um winner quote unquote for this car and a fat guy in little coat is of course named after the great chris farley in tommy boy where he tries on David Spade's coat and it doesn't fit and he winds up ripping it. So something in this car that does not fit, it does fit, but it's just really the biggest con that I have for this car is the CVT transmission, um, which is part of the plug-in hybrid. Um, it's, it drones. And by droning, I mean, it's, it, whenever it, advances speed because this doesn't you know a cvt doesn't have a continuously variable transmission doesn't have gears the way an automatic transmission does the way a manual transmission does it tends you know when you accelerate it tends to make a lot of noise or more noise than you're used to it's not completely awful but it's noticeable um and again you know you, that doesn't mean that it's bad it just it doesn't quite fit for this. And again, it's a trade-off that you're going to have to make. If you want that all-electric range, if you want the better fuel efficiency that comes with a hybrid, you're going to have to pay more, and it's going to be louder than the regular Corsair. If that trade-off is worth it for you, that, that's honestly for, for you to decide in your test case but or your use case. But you're going to have to think about that. So just noise in general is, is, is a little bit of a, of a downfall for this car. That doesn't mean that this car is noisy, but it is noisier than what you'd expect from other Lincolns, I think. But it has a little bit uh, more cabin noise than I'm used to for a Lincoln. So I don't know if that's the plug-in hybrid or if it's just this particular model, but I need to note that, you know, in, in my review here. I think that overall, this is a really good car. I think it stacks up pretty well with the competition, but that's one of the issues here that you get with Lincoln. Lincoln is going to, to do most things well. So when you look at it, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's ride, it drives well, it handles decently, depending on what handling you want. So if you're looking for more comfort, handling this is great um gets good gas mileage it has good power it's very comfortable um and it's it offers a good value in this class but this is one of the things where i get into with the long-term outlook so when i look at the long-term outlook i'm not talking about you know, whether this is reliability, because I can't, you can't really judge that with a new car. Um, so I don't talk about the reliability aspect. I'm talking about whether it holds its value and whether you'll, will you look back over the next five years and say, I wish I'd bought something else, or I wish I'd at least considered something else. And I think that that's something that you need to, to think about um, with this car in particular. Um, one of the things that's that stands out to me is that, again, when you look at it across the board, it kind of, except for comfort and maybe value, it's a lot of other cars in its class can can exceed it. So if you're looking for athleticism, you know, like a, a, a strong acceleration, you know, fast acceleration. Uh, really crisp handling 
um, you're going to find, you know, cars like BMW, Mercedes are going to be better. If you're looking for something that can do, um, that it can handle a lot of different type of weather, you're going to find that with like something like from a Land Rover. Um, you know, if you're looking for, you know, value, a Lexus, a Cadillac are going to compete with it on that front. Genesis, Acura are going to compete with it on that front. If you're looking for comfort, it that is kind of the area where it comes out ahead of most. But Mercedes can compete there. Genesis can compete there. Cadillac, in some ways, can compete there. Depends on the models. Um, depends on the trim. But, you know... It's not a slam dunk win. I would say that Lincoln is probably in the upper echelon for comfort when it comes to luxury SUVs, but it's not an unqualified number one. So again, you know, if it's in your, if that's the, the most important thing for you, then, then, then this could match for you. So that, that's where I'm kind of stuck on it. If we look at that five year, five plus year, average i think that a corsair if you want if you're leaning towards comfort and luxury that's a car that's really gonna match up for you but if you're looking at a, a plug-in hybrid and this is there i think that over the next five years i have a feeling you're gonna you're you, you may question yourself mainly because if more oems put plug-in hybrids out you're you're going to see that all electric range increase. So it's not out of the question, you know, like Toyota RAV4 plug-in hybrid already gets like 40 miles, uh, 40 miles all electric range. Um, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if maybe a second gen uh, Lincoln Corsair plug-in hybrid does even better, you know, with the all electric range. So that's something that you might want to you might be aware of that, that I could see you questioning yourself. Like, I wish I hadn't done this. If you're like, I think I want electric, but I'm not a hundred percent, but you're like over 60%, you should probably look at just electric. Like, honestly, if you're, if you're leaning more towards electric, just do it. Um, especially at this price point, like you're paying more for the gasoline aspect. Um, and you won't get the full electrification. Like you won't get a full electric drive. If you're leaning more towards gasoline, then just go gasoline. Don't pay the premium. That's where I kind of get a little bit stuck in the middle with this. So that brings us to, a, if you looked at my, uh, my screen, you'll already know what the song is. What song is this car? It is 5150 by Van Halen. It's a very underrated Van Halen song, but that's not why I'm picking this. I'm picking this because that is a song about compromise. Um, and I think that for this particular car, the Corsair plug-in hybrid, you will have to make some, some compromises. Um, you will have to, to, to really think about things that way. So that's where... That's where I'm at with this. I think that there's some compromises. It, I think it's a good car, but it's something that you have to balance that out. Um, it's not a 50-50 balance. Something's going to get more um, for you. And so you have to realize that whether it's between a Corsair guess only and a Corsair plug-in hybrid, they're sacrifices or compromises. I shouldn't say sacrifices. They're compromises. Between a Lincoln and other luxury SUVs, there are compromises. I want to thank you for watching. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. We're primarily on Twitter under Vision Quest A. We're also on YouTube under Vision Quest Auto. You can find us on Instagram. Um, you can find us on most other sh social media platforms. If you have any questions, you can reach out to us on Twitter or Instagram. Um, you know, we'd be happy to, to answer any questions. For Vision Quest Auto, this is Frank Nieto. I want to thank you for watching, and uh, fly equals fly.